So this is Olram Subtlety, a wonderful, wonderful piece to use. Okay, to start out, we have four cards, uh, the sixes and the nines, and just four cards because I want to be fair as I go through this. And um, again, I like to show it to be absolutely fair before we even begin. Okay, um, and even through that fair display you just saw, we can be able to secretly retain one card need to be. In a similar way, let me actually adjust this for one second. There we go. And in a similar case, uh, using this in context to an Elmsley count, we can actually do the same count again. One, two, three, four. And that is the Olram. And then leading into the Elmsley count, we can continue to show that all we see is sixes and nines. And lo and behold, we can still retain that card secretly. That is the Olram subtlety in combination with the Elmsley count, which I had covered in a previous video. So the Olram, which is credited to Marlowe, is a wonderful, wonderful move and was integral to the very first trick I ever learned, Jazz Aces, which I'll give in an upcoming video, but with my own context and my own thoughts and my own take on the trick. But for right now, I want to cover a classic move of Marlowe's that is just so, so wonderful. So let's jump into it. Um, and before, actually, before I jump into it, if you can, leave a like. That'll be awesome. Evolving Magic Academy always appreciates that. So let's go into it, um, the actual move itself. Well, actually, let's, let's go co first cover how I initially got into that position. You can act, this is just one clever way I got into it. Um, let me actually adjust this. Let me see right around here. There we go. I just wanted to make sure I got the camera angles pretty much just right. So we can just have uh, in the context leading into it, I just had four cards, sixes and nines. That's a, well, loosely a joke. Um, what it really refers to is like people can't tell sixes from nines really apart in the context of discrepancy and when you're doing the Elmsley count and stuff of that nature. And it's also the how I was taught to use um, the sixes and nines because you can't even tell them apart in, in continuous action is how I learned uh, the Jazz Aces. These are the four different cards in context. So we have uh, these cards. I, t I just have, I just, you know, lay them out, show them, then grab them on the table, and I have the card I want to change into it uh, right on top of the deck. Eight of hearts, ace of hearts, what have you. I even have the four aces here for jazz aces. Another section, much later. <laughs> but let's say we use the ace of hearts for fun. We put the four cards on top. We got a break below the ace of hearts. Place the four cards face down on top. If you count them out, just slipping off the cards the four cards with the one addition, the Ace of Hearts. We slip off one, one, and we can leave it a little bit off so you can actually see the display. One, two, three, and then four. Now, here's the important part. When we scroll the cards up, we leave one of the sixes or nines, in this case a nine, uh, on the pack as we get a pinky break below the other, uh, presumably three cards, but one of them's a double, so you got the Ace of Hearts right here. So I square it up, turn the deck over for covering your action on the nine, and then I actually do, and I, I go into a second display, which is kind of running without being chased, but I wanted to demonstrate the all ram in its full context. So I can show it, I turn, uh, I take off one card from the top, I show one at the bottom card, which is a six, and then I deal the top card. That's a discrepancy as I turn to show this one. It's just a wonderful action. I'll do it up to speed. Oh, so actually, I'll just do it slow speed and then you'll see it. So the action is this, deal the top card. We then turn over the recessive hand and show its card that I had taken over. I display it, drop it on there, and then you could openly take these cards and show them. Some people do this, really not necessary, just deal it off, show it. And then depending upon the context of the routine, if you need that card, the selected secret card on bottom, got it there, if you need a second from the top, 
uh, you can just take these two cards into one hand, show it, and then take it underneath to get it stacked from the top. If you want it on bottom, you can just display these cards and drop them on top, and then you've got the card where you need it. So in the full con so in the context for the old ram, you want the secret selection second from the top. Then you push off one card, display, deal, display, deal, display, display, play on top in the original effect. And then you can show the secret card right there. In the context for the old ram into Elmsley, display, deal, display, deal, display, display, and then deal underneath. And then now we've controlled the second on the top. To which I can turn them, turn the cards up, and we can do an Elmsley count. And boom, you've got that card uh, to the top if you need it. Or if you want to control it to second from the top, you can then do a little flick on the last card and then take it to the second from the top. In action, it would look like this. So I got second from the top after the old run. So then I do an Elmsley. And I can do a little flick in AP, and I can put it underneath, turn the pack over, and then you can get that thing for whatever trick you do. But in the context of um, Jazz Aces, we would want on top. I'm loosely foreshadowing what is going to happen. Because <laughs> I love Jazz Aces. It was one of my favorite tricks. It's how some entertainers made into the castles. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's always pretty fun. So one last time to do it up to speed. I'll do the whole thing. All ram into endlessly. We just deal it off one card, show this card, deal the top card, show this card, show these two. Uh, I would actually go underneath. Doesn't even matter. If you don't, if you play off, oh, whatever, I'll put it underneath. No one really cares. Unless you force them to care or you intentionally flash. In this case, no one cares. Turn it up, and then you can actually show everything is fair. From, like, basically every angle, we secretly know what's going on. So that is the old ram and how you can use it in combination with Elmsley, the basics so you can use it for other tricks. I'm going to use it for the context of what I knew best in Jazz Aces that'll be coming up. Just wanted to get everyone excited and uh, all happy about all of that. But with that said, I hope everyone's having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, hope you get some mileage out of this effect. Like if you enjoyed the video and See you in the next video.